Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordy and Glory video. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at another core concept of competitive 40k. In our last installment, we looked at force concentration and how important it is to make sure that you don't spread out your army if you're taking an elite list. Don't worry if you've not seen that video, I'll make sure there's a link to it at the end of the this one but the concept that we are going to be looking at this time is one of the most common tactics employed in competitive 40k in fact i don't think i have gone to a tournament in the last 10 years where someone hasn't tried this against me at least once so being aware of it understanding what its intentions are how you can conduct one yourself and how you can counter it is very, very important. I am talking about the Alpha Strike. And so without further ado, let's not mess around any further. Let's begin by asking and answering one simple question. What is an Alpha Strike? Well, the idea is actually pretty straightforward. In the opening turns of the game, you deliver such a massively effective hammer blow against your opponent that the game is already over. There's almost no point in playing out the remaining turns because it is a foregone conclusion. Now, Alpha Strikes tend to focus on being incredibly damage dealing. The whole point is they go in there, they smash the entire area, they kill anything that isn't part of their own army. And Alpha Strikes tend to have two kinds of target. Either they go in and cause absolute wanton destruction, focusing on the enemy damage dealers, at which point when it goes over to the enemy turn, their firepower or their combat power is so reduced that any kind of counterattack is going to be half baked at best, at which point the following turn, you have such an advantage in damage output that you can just roll the enemy up and start tabling them. The other way that Alpha Strike can work is by completely hamstringing the opponent's ability to score points by tending to focus on their maneuverability. This can include completely de-mechanizing, de-tracking an enemy force, making them much, much slower. This second way of doing it can lead in the long term to a relatively equal amount of casualties over the course of the game, but the opponent scores so many less points because all of their units that they were planning on doing objectives with planning on doing secondaries with are either slow down to the point where they can't do that job anymore or they have been annihilated either way the opening barrage of firepower has been so effective that the game was essentially won in a single turn fundamentally Alpha Strikes need to be conducted in the first two turns of the game. Ideally, they would be done on the very first turn, a opening maneuver that just knocks your opponent out from the very beginning, giving you the greatest possible advantage. But it's not always possible to get it off turn one. This can be because of terrain. In competitive environments, you tend to find you have set terrain maps like with UKTC and WTC, and these are very dense with lots of line of sight blocking. If you're a shooty army, it just may not be possible to line your guns up from the get-go. Also, if you're not a shooty army, you might be a combat force and you can absolutely have combat alpha strikes where you zoom across the board as quickly as possible, get into the enemy's face and just start chopping them up. Well, it may not be possible to conduct that turn one attack. But in both of these cases, what you do is you don't just wait around and just let your first turn go. You use this first turn to maneuver, to set yourself up so that in the second turn, you can deliver the big punch. Most factions in 40K can be built to conduct an alpha strike, but historically, the army that has been most well known for it over all of the additions has to be the Eldar with their fantastic maneuverability and incredible firepower, we now have generations of 40k players who have been on the receiving end of an Eldar Alpha Strike. Another faction which has traditionally been very Alpha Strike focused is the Tau. 
Now, this isn't so much a thing at the beginning of 10th edition because of the way that army rule works. That may, of course, change when their codex comes out. But the Tau are well known for delivering a huge blow and for people to get blown off the table in one turn of Tau shooting. You've had things like Farsight Bomb be legacy tactics they have employed. I think that the proclivity and the tendency for these two factions to focus on Alpha Strikes does go some way to explaining why many players dread facing off against them in a game of 40k. But with all of that said, what are the main advantages of pulling off an Alpha Strike? Well, firstly, and most obviously, is that it puts you in a very favorable position if done successfully and can lead to you winning the battle relatively easily. If you're at a tournament, then this really is the main aim of the game. You want to try and win as many battles as possible so you can take the gold and win the whole event. Furthermore, the Alpha Strike is a pretty straightforward tactic. Most players can grasp it. You're going to go in there and do loads and loads of damage. The only tricky bit to it is target prioritization. If you're going to go in and try and cripple your opponent's army in one go, you better make sure that you destroy the units that are key to his list. There are also a couple of real-life logistical reasons as to why you might want to conduct an alpha strike. Number one, this tactic tends to be favoured by elite armies. This means you'll need less models and it can be an easier army to pilot. You're not trying to keep track of so many different things throughout the game. Secondly, you might find your games are over very quickly. I have seen games which have been over within 30 minutes because of someone just getting alpha striked so hard that there's just no point in playing out the rest of the game. And so this means that you have more time to rest, relax and recharge between rounds. If you're someone who has gone four games in a row and you have managed to win all of those and you've only had to play like an hour to an hour and a half of each game then when you get to game number five which very well may be the final the game to decide who's going to win the tournament you're probably going to be much more refreshed much more relaxed you're going to have endured less mental strain your brain is going to be ready to rock and roll if you then go up against someone who has been playing five sorry, four grueling attrition matches where every dice roll and every turn has mattered, they might get to their final game, that fifth game, and be absolutely shattered. Their brain might be leaking out the side of their ears. They're just not really on the same sort of mental stamina, mental capacity that you're at right now. And so you get to that fifth game and you have a real world advantage being you're less tired, and so therefore you're less likely to make mistakes, your opponent's more likely to make mistakes, and you can take advantage of that. But that covers all of the advantages of an Alpha Strike, but what about some of its disadvantages? What are its weaknesses? Personally, I see Alpha Strikes as very high reward, but very, very risky. If you go in there and it doesn't work out, maybe you just bounce. This is a dice game after all. Maybe your opponent has some countermeasures that you weren't aware of. Maybe their army is just resilient. And you overexpose your forces, you overextend your army, and you don't do the damage that you need to do. Well, the return stroke, the counterattack, the counter battery fire might be so overwhelming that in fact what happens is your opponent pulls an uno reverse card on you and you've tried to alpha strike them but you end up getting alpha struck yourself i have personally seen this happen so many times you go back through my taunt report videos and there are multiple examples of eldar going for the throat turn one and it just not happening and then suddenly all of these fragile units are left out in front of a guard gun line and that is a recipe for disaster another flaw with the alpha strike is it is somewhat reliant on shock and awe 
hitting the enemy opposing forces so hard that the controlling player kind of is left reeling. It might sound a bit exaggerated, but they're left a bit demoralized and they think to themselves, oh man, I've never been hit like that before. That's crazy. Oh man, there's no way I can win the game now. And knocking that opposing player into a losing mentality where they think, oh well, even if I play the game out and they might still continue to play all the turns, they've almost resigned themselves to their fate. And if you enter a game or you play a game with the mentality that you have lost, you probably will lose that game. But of course, if the opposing player isn't shocked by the tactic, perhaps they've been on the receiving end of many alpha strikes before they're more of a veteran of the game then they might realize that sure they've taken a big blow but they can see the bigger picture and they can see right well this now means i've got to sort of aim for a turn four turn five win and they can adapt their tactics accordingly what i'm saying is alpha strikes tend to be more effective against less experienced players but veterans are aware of them and even if one successfully goes off against them, they might have a few tricks with their sleeves and they might just have the mentality to push through and make sure that the game is not a foregone conclusion. But it's not just different players and mentalities that can overcome an alpha strike. It tends to be better against elite armies. Those factions which maybe rely upon one or two really important units to get the job done and when they're gone the list just sort of collapses but if you face off against another faction which might have lots of inbuilt redundancy someone who has built their list in a way that okay if i lose one or two units i have still got three four five six units it might be a lot less effective if you face off against someone and they've got one big main tank maybe it's a repulsor full of something maybe it's a land raider with loads and loads of terminators in it maybe it's just a big unit of death wing terminators then if you knock that unit out often it's going to be a really heavy blow but if you play against someone who has got not one piece of armor or two pieces of armor in their army but three four five maybe instead of relying upon one big tank they're relying upon four or five smaller ones suddenly the alpha strike becomes less effective because you can go in there and knock out half of the enemy big hitters but if half of them still remain maybe they're hiding out of line of sight maybe you just couldn't get to them well that means you're in a difficult position because the enemy still has plenty of assets to hit you back with a good example of a faction which is resistant to alpha strikes is the imperial guard fundamentally guard units individually don't do very much it's the fact that you can bring multiples of them and when they start working together they become very very good a guard player isn't going to turn up to a game with one or two lehman russes he's going to turn up with three four maybe even five or six russes a guard player isn't going to turn up to a game with like one artillery piece he's going to bring a couple of basilisks maybe some mortars as well a guard player isn't going to turn up to a game with one or two 20 man infantry blobs he's going to have 80 100 infantry and it's this level of redundancy that can make guard very tricky to alpha strike also another thing that makes guard um a little harder to alpha strike is the fact that they are a horde army with lots of guns a lot of horde armies you go in there and you decimate the front ranks well it means that because they tend to be combat focused they're a little bit further away they might not get their charges off think things like orcs where if you can demobilize and detract them then a lot of their threat goes down their threat range goes down but with guard because we've got loads and loads of guns you can kill half of the guns but there's still a lot of firepower left and we don't need to get up close and personal to our damage. We can blast you from afar. One final issue I have noticed with Alpha Strikes is if you build your entire list towards them, you go all in and it doesn't work, you can struggle to adapt. They're a bit of a one trick pony. I found that if an alpha strike doesn't work, it can leave the opposing player at a big disadvantage, even if they don't get hit back all that hard. Perhaps because you focused on units that do damage, your objective control is a lot lower. And so if you can't just kill the enemy and they're able to weather your attacks and sit on some primary, 
even though you're doing lots of damage, you may struggle to win the game because you're not able to score as many points. The best Alpha Strike armies I have seen are those which can take advantage of them of opportunities occurring organically. So you don't build your entire list on the on the big blow. What you do is you take a list which is quite maneuverable and has a lot of firepower, but it doesn't need to kill things to win. Maybe you can zip around the table, scoring some engagement all fronts, deploying those teleport teleporter homers, getting some um, behind enemy lines. But if your opponent makes a mistake, maybe they move out too aggressively, suddenly you can bring your army together, get that force concentration and deliver an organically occurring alpha strike. I feel like if you try and force the alpha strike, it can be very risky. But if you have the opportunity as and when they arise to do one, then that's great. Another example of this is perhaps you never intended to do the alpha strike at the beginning of the game, but you've seen your opponent has deployed a bit badly. Maybe they've left a few units that are massively exposed and they haven't taken advantage of the landscape blocking terrain. Well, you adapt on the fly. And you go, look, if I get first turn, I can take out those key units. Brilliant. But if I don't get first turn, it's not in the world. I can continue with my other plan. That's how I have ever conducted an alpha strike. I've never built a list with the intention of just blasting someone off the table in one go. I've built lists that can score points and they happen to be able to take advantage of opportunities to do damage as and when they crop up. So in summary, the Alpha Strike is a tactic which aims to do a massive amount of damage in the opening turns of the game. And if it goes off and it works, it can be devastating for the opponent. But if you bounce or things just don't go according to plan, it can leave you exceptionally vulnerable to counter attack. Of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Have you ever done an alpha strike? Did it work? Do you still do them? Or is it more of a backup tactic? And what do you think is the faction that is best at doing alpha strikes right now in 10th edition? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more during glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a big shout out to bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox and august varney thank you guys so much your incredible generosity is a massive part of how i'm able to do more do glory full time and it is a big driving force behind the channel but i hope you all enjoyed today's video thank you for watching and of course as always I'll see you guys next time <laughs>